very much, Benedict, and also for posing those very good questions. Uh, our next speaker, uh, the Foreign Minister of uh, Finland, Kikomelia, uh, has actually also been one of the founders of Attack Finland. have been slow in waking up to the problems that tax havens, or more appropriately, secrecy jurisdictions, pose to global equity, stability, and functioning markets. The task force has been quick in developing analysis and policy measures on these issues. The task force has done an excellent work in bringing issues of illicit financial flows estimated that more than one trillion US dollars each year from developing countries into industrialized uh, countries to the forefront of uh, international development cooperation. And financial integrity is today a key priority. In its program <coughs> adopted in June this year, the new Finnish government committed itself increasing stability, <coughs> transparency, and responsibility in international financial markets, and to stand in the front line in ending international tax evasion, and also to shut down tax havens. Now that our new government has started work, it is time uh, to think how to turn these commitments into concrete action. The the Finnish government has been engaged in negotiations with the Tax Justice Network uh, on possibilities to host uh, the 2012 Major International Tax Justice Seminar in Helsinki on transfer pricing of multinational companies. Uh, we will be looking forward to discussions on whether Finland could join Norway and also Denmark in the partnership panel of the task force and whether tackling the misuse of transfer pricing could become a topic where Finland uh, could start having a higher international profile. And also, given the Nordic country's reputation for sound economic policies, good governance, and transparency on the world stage, we should discuss the possibility of Nordic cooperation in advancing these themes in other international fora as well. We would also like to see Finland promoting the European Union framework for a common consolidated corporate tax base, CCCTB, which would ensure that corporations would be taxed as single units within the European Union and would create <coughs> further tax cooperation within the EU to tackle tax evasion with the EU economies, which is estimated at two to 5% of GDP by the Commission. In addition to companies' misuse of transfer pricing, another important theme is developing and promoting models uh, for the multilateral automatic information exchange on tax issues. 
the OECD is currently preparing the Convention on Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters. And Finland welcomes this development and will promote automatic exchange of tax information in its foreign policy, both through this convention and other means such as enlarging the membership and scope of the European Savings Tax Directive. The almost empty OECD blacklist of, of tax havens shows that the current model of bilateral treaties for tax information exchange <coughs> is not enough. We need multilateral automatic exchange of information. In addition, the situation demonstrates that we need stricter criteria and lists for defining tax havens and secret jurisdictions. And we welcome the Financial Secrecy Index of the Tax Justice Network, just published in uh, its 2011 edition, and would like to encourage debate and reactions from multilateral institutions towards independent work carried uh, out by civil society. And the Finnish government explicitly supports the introduction of financial transaction taxes in its program. And the recent proposal from the European Commission for a financial transaction tax at the EU level is a welcome initiative. It is not perfect, but it is a good starting point. And while it has, but while it has strong support from many member states and the European Parliament, it is by no means certain to be adopted as some governments, also in the Nordic family, continue to oppose it. However, some EU member states, including France and Germany, have signaled their willingness to go ahead with the plan, even uh, in this case, either as a Eurozone project or in some other coalition of the willing type of arrangement. In the latter scenario, Norway could definitely be among the first countries to uh, join and implement the tax. And even the, in the event of a uh, EU FTT, Norway can look into the possibility of joining the arrangement. As a respected and influential global actor, Norway could also use its leverage to garner support for the FTT among the G20 and other countries. The FTT works against short-term speculative and flash transactions as they operate with low margins uh, on huge volumes and frequency. The low tax percentage would make many such trades less profitable and thus their volume would be reduced. It is in this way similar to a tax on harmful, addictive or dangerous products that are not banned, such as cigarettes or alcohol. A FTT of only 0.05 to 0.1% of the value of the transaction, depending on the type of transaction and the proposal, and with differentiated rates for different types of financial products to avoid market distortions would not affect transactions which have a direct link to productive investment, trade or management of uh, risk. We do not want to weaken the real economy, but the real economy suffers from the uh, fact that the financial sector uh, has uh, in, in many ways left this reality behind it. <coughs> we need a financial transaction tax for increased stability and for putting brakes on the ever worsening cycle of bubbles and crises. Both bull and bear markets are amplified by speculative and automated uh, trading. Many civil society organizations and political parties in Europe think that parts uh, of the revenues of uh, FTTs, which are estimated at 50 uh, to 200 billion euros, depending on how broad the tax base is, should remain in the countries that uh, uh, introduce the FTT. These revenues could be used to cushion the negative impact of current austerity measures 
and the cost of uh, bailing out failed financial institutions, which are at the heart of the current financial and economic uh, crisis. However, the economic crisis has also hit countries uh, uh, in the South. And it is always ordinary people, and sadly those most poorest in the North and South who are pay paying a disproportionate price for the crisis, which in which they had no uh, role in bringing about. And therefore, part of the revenue should be directed towards tackling poverty in the South. As welcome as the recent developments in the EU have been, it is noteworthy that the Commission's proposal does not include the traditional Tobin tax on currency transactions, which are concentrated in, a, in fact in only four financial centres, London, New York, Frankfurt and Tokyo, and uh, the Commission proposes very low tax percentages also. While the discussions in the Council of the EU uh, will be based on the Commission's proposal, the possibility of including currency transactions in the FTT have to be also considered. The stated reason for excluding this, that, namely that the tax on currency transactions would be in violation of the free movement of capital within the single market, would not prevent imposing the tax on non-EU currencies, such as the US dollar, the Chinese renminbi, or the Robin Chimshona, for that matter. Uh, in the time uh, when even the traditionally conservative International Monetary Fund has both stated that the FTT is feasible and has started to embrace capital controls as a means for increasing stability, we should be ready to make bold commitments at the EU level. There is a path worth following for dealing with the global financial crisis where sentiments against banks are running high and new taxation proposals would be welcomed by the public, even loved by many of us. <laughs> uh, a recent Eurobarometer poll shows that the majority, 61% of Europeans, are strongly in favour of, of an FTT. And of these, uh, more than 80% agree that if a global arrangement agreement cannot be reached, such a tax should initially be implemented in uh, only the EU to begin with. Transaction taxes are sometimes opposed for the fear that they will drive business out of the country. But this is not a sustainable argument. For example, the United Kingdom has already a stamp duty for stock market trade, and some 40 countries already have different kinds of transaction taxes in place. And in addition, the most often uh, cited example of negative effects uh, of an FTT, namely the Swedish experiment of the late 80s and nine, uh, early 90s, is misguided. The reason for the massive flight of financial trade from Sweden was due to the fundamentally flawed design of the tax. In the tax models uh, presently discussed, uh, including the EC uh, Commission proposal, this problem has been dealt with. The Nordic model, based on progressive, effective, and relatively high taxation, <coughs> has proven to be the most competitive and equal in the world, combining economic viability and vitality with social well-being. Norway, Finland, and the other Nordic countries should join forces and take this experience uh, to the global stage and present alternatives uh, to the prevailing race to the bottom mentality. Working together, the Nordic countries can make a difference. Increasing uh, financial transparency and taxing international financial transactions are important in themselves and good starting point for further action but they are merely starting points because it is clear that we need significantly more reforms to achieve the kind of global governance needed to prevent future crises and ensure an equitable distribution of uh, the benefits of globalization. In the European Union and the Eurogroup, 
we are still struggling to overcome the sovereign debt crisis. There is no business as usual option. But some of the proposals for dealing with the crisis offer cures that can be worse than the disease. This is a case where proposals are made that would delegitimize Keynesian policies and make austerity the fundamental rule that would be even written into the member states' constitutions in the spirit of the neoliberal policy agenda, which has brought about the crisis in the first place. <coughs> the permanent European stability mechanism <coughs> set uh, to come into force in 2013 has also many merits. Among other things, it, include, it includes provisions for debt restructuring and for the financial sector to take responsibility for its reckless lending. The ESM, together with the so-called six-pack uh, of legislation for financial governance said to be adopted, may still need some seven up to make it uh, functional, particularly in the field of market regulation. And while it may reduce the likelihood of new financial crisis in the future, it offers no comfort in the immediate future where urgent measures are called for and where all our eyes will be once again on the meetings uh, next week. But this is an issue where the participation of all states and not only the Euro countries or even the EU member states uh, is needed. There is no way Norway can avoid being affected by the crisis if mismanagement leads in the worst case, to global financial meltdown. A few points on trade. Finland supports free and, uh, a free and fair trade <coughs> regime and wants to support the integration of the developing countries into the international economy. The needs of the least developed countries uh, to develop their own economies and to strengthen their influence in trade policy have to be recognized and supported. The commitment uh, of all actors in the global economy to social and corporate responsibility has to be ensured with binding rules and agreements. The rules governing international trade have to be developed so as to better take into account the exigencies of environmental and consumer protection, human rights and core labor standards. And we also want to see a new international mechanism created for debt adjustment and relief. We also want to see uh, the global rules-based trade regime maintained, improved and strengthened. Whatever the shortcomings of the WTO, a universal trade regime with equal participation from all the countries in the world is surely preferable compared to the present trend of regionalization and bilateralization of trade and investment agreements, which almost inevitably are biased in favor of the strongest party. In the WTO, even the poorest and smallest countries can resort to the trade dispute mechanism against the richest and biggest countries to gain justice uh, against their protectionist and discriminatory measures, provided, of course, that they are adequately resourced, which is why the capacity building of the developing, developing countries has to be part of the Nordic countries' trade and development policies. And this is also why we would like to see a new global agreement on investment. It was very right that the draft multilater multilateral agreement uh, uh, on investment uh, of the OECD was abandoned, abandoned largely because of the actions and reactions of the international uh, NGO community. It was right to uh, put this aside because the proposal would have drastically altered the balance of rights and obligations between governments and transnational investors in favor of the latter. However, an agreement negotiated with full participation of the developing uh, countries with the right balance safeguarding the rights of governments and taking proper uh, account of the need to ensure respect 
uh, for environmental, consumer and labor standards, as well as corporate responsibility, is uh, still very much needed. And uh, in the work for such an agreement, the NGO community, such as ATTAC and others, have a vital role to play. Thank you.